Hey YouTube, welcome back to New York's TCG, and today we are back into the content grind after uh, somehow regaining my soul after the last week and a half, two weeks of constant grinding. And uh, today we're going to talk about the global meta, because it's very easy to look at the Japanese meta and be like, oh, that's what we're in for. But I think anybody that was paying enough attention saw that our meta was not quite the same as the Japanese meta. It actually had some pretty, 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 pretty poignant di uh, differences. Like, we, we actually were able to see mad shifts that just didn't really reflect the meta the way it was over in the OCG. So, with that being said, I am going to let you guys know that, as per usual, <laughs> if you want to join the Unix fam, all you gotta do is go down, click the uh, like button, subscribe to the channel, hit that notification button, and comment to let me know your thoughts. We're going to continue with the content in here, and we've got a lot more stuff coming up for One Piece, Dragon Ball, and Tsunami Battle Spirits, so uh, stay tuned. And with that, let's jump into the meat and potatoes of this video and start talking about the leaders. The breakdown, I think, will reflect the meta, and this is kind of like a preamble, you know, we're going to see how the meta shapes, but this is just kind of my educated guess, so hope you enjoy. So we have to get it out of the way, all right? Like, there's no ifs, ands, or buts. Um, we all kind of know the two leaders that are probably going to be played the most. But the reason why I wanted to make this is that it's not just about what deck is the best. Because we've seen that playing the best deck or a deck being objectively good does not make the deck the most played or the least played. You know, uh, no offense to anybody, but look at Do Flamingo. Surprising amounts of representation without that deck ever showing that it was head and shoulders better than any other deck that would be considered top of the meta. So sometimes popularity and you know, player preference is going to come into a huge point. That's like the whole thing about the meta. The meta isn't what's best, the meta is what's most prevalent, what's most popular. And, you know, being good has a correlation with that. But going into the next set, uh, 100% we are going to see Romano Zoro, Romano Zoro as a uh, top competitor. Uh, why? There's a mixture of reasons. One, yes, set two cards allow this deck to be even stronger than what it was before. And before it was pretty strong, but it can get walled by certain decks, you know. Um, a good Dofi player might be able to put up a, gun, a bunch of uh, good blockers. Um, in the mirror, you know, you're playing red versus red. That's definitely going to be a testament of skill plus draws. Green can establish eight drop with blockers, and you're sitting in a very, very tough position, sometimes feeling unwinnable with Zoro. But next set, Zoro's going be to become a lot faster, a lot more consistent, and you have to put yourself in a position to where, uh, to where, like, you have to understand that Zoro is going to be a majority of the field once more. It's going to feel like the beginning of set one all over again, except this time he's not going to just fall off for no reason. So Zoro is definitely going to be up there. A lot of people already have the deck. A lot of people already love the deck. A lot of people bought the the um, alt art leader in anticipation for Zoro in set two. So you can bet Zoro will be at the top of the most used decks for sure. Uh, moving on to the next touch, we have Kinemon. Um, Kinemon has been seen as, in some cases, the Zoro killer, and he actually is able to play a lot of cards that we already know and love at a cheaper price. I mean, you're going to be able to see Okikus, um, as well as um, Rizos discounted. You're going to be able to play big bosses from the new set, such as Odin, and he's going to be able to get it in. Now, playing this value play is going to be a very, very, very horizontal shift from uh, Kid. For a lot of players you're going to literally still be playing your comfortable green cards except you know you're going to be able to sit here and have a little bit of a different spin on it um the popularity in terms of both its dominance and its function i believe are going to be the things that really 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 have this leader sitting high uh you're going to see this leader a lot and if you already know how to play against green you're only going to have to shift a little bit the things about kinnaman that you're going to be able to really note, like I'm going to touch upon this and everything you need to know about Kinnaman later on in the uh, following month, is that there are some things that are different. You're going to be seeing Okiku's on two Dawn, which is something that's really crazy. Same time, you don't have to treat one life without blockers like it's zero life without blockers, which you would have to when you're playing against Kid, just because of the ability to double swing. So there's pluses and minuses. But just know that due to uh, OCG popularity as well as people already having fully fleshed green decks already, this is going to be a very, very, very common pick because it is not that hard to move into. Uh, moving on to the next one, we've got Law. 
this is another leader that kind of fits into the Zoro space of uh, lots of people knew that Law was going to be good for this set. Uh, he was estimated to be the best deck of this set based off of OCG, but that's what I'm saying. OCG meta and global meta are not the same. But he's only gaining more tools come uh, OPO2, and on top of that, he is going to be headed into a space where, um, like just like Zoro, people bought the alt art because they knew he was going to be good. Uh, this leader is still going to be insane in terms of card advantage. He's going to be able to bounce a bunch of searchers. Uh, you're gaining another searcher next set that can search both your one drop searchers. He's going to gain consistency and he's going to gain utility. And the deck already has power. Like when this deck starts going, there is not really much you can do against it because it just gains so many cards in hand, sets up so many blockers and functions on a different scale than a lot of these decks that are currently being played. So, um, expect law to be probably more popular than he is now even right now he actually holds a fair amount of representation uh, representation for a tournament like um i think last time last uh treasure cup in dallas it was like what like a 111 kid if i'm not mistaken 79 kaido 71 luffy and there was like 50 law 50 dofi 50 zoro essentially well around there 42 something like that the point is law is probably going to go up on the scale because it is just simply going to become the deck it is plus more and that's already a good deck uh now in the global meta aggro has always been a little heavier than it was in the ocg and that prevented lots of dual color leaders from being played to their max efficiency because that four life was a heavy entry cost but as we get more and more cards and people become more and more skilled with this game i think that's going to slightly shift but we shall see because zoro is even faster now moving on to cards that are probably going to hit that return button you got eustace kid now i know a lot of people are going to be like well what's the point when kinemon's coming out but you see the average tcg player does not actually like change especially when they've already spent time foiling out their decks to max rarity and there's always going to be that person who wants to be able to top with kid and be like i am still playing kid and i'm so skilled i can pilot kid even through the next meta there's always going to be that person that believes that like, you know, regardless of what data you can give them, that kid's ability to dual attack for a game is stronger than Kinnaman's ability to discount people. Or there's going to be people that play Kinnaman and then just get to the point where, oh, this will be auto game if I had Eustace Captain Kid, and they want to switch back. So because of that, people already having this deck, people playing with this deck, practicing with this deck, and him still being very strong, there are going to be an influx of people that still want to play Eustace Captain Kid over Kinnaman. And so I would not expect this guy to just die out of the format. You're going to need to understand how to manage your life to not get yourself within monkey stomp range of Kid's leader effect. Uh, there, there's still going to be that. So please watch out for him. He's going to be in this meta still regardless. Uh, next, you have Kaido. Kaido is also just going to be one of those that lots of people still have fully foiled, fully altarded. He's going to gain another engine, and you can't really use both of them at the same time without sacrificing, because Kaido essentially is ran in two parts. The Animal Pirate's core, followed by whatever other core you put beside it. That can be Impel Down, that can be Fill. But there's just not enough deck space to put Impel Down and Fill in the same deck, along with all of your Kaido Bombs. So this guy is going to pretty much choose between which side core it wants, and um, it's still going to do the same thing. However, that shows you, that's like a testament to how powerful Kaido's cards are right now. Even going a full set ahead of time, if Kaido curves, Kaido curves. And if Kaido curves, you're just constantly destroying your opponent's cards while adding bodies of your own, and that's still strong. That doesn't get power crept. You just have to decide what supplementary cards you want to have, film or impel down. But uh, Kaido's still going to be a popular pick. The people that are diehard Kaido mains can still be diehard Kaido mains. And as you guys saw, Kaido was the second most represented deck at the end of uh, Treasure Cup Dallas. And so I do not see Kaido going anywhere in the global meta. Um, followed by that, I'm hitting up Luffy. Luffy is definitely going to have a little bit of a falling point. Mainly because when it comes to a strong red midrange, Whitebeard will still be that dude. Um, when we'll get to that later, but Whitebeard will be that newcomer playing very powerful cards with an extremely ignorant field card that makes the final little bit of life against Whitebeard the most troublesome life that you will ever encounter unless they have zero field. Um, so that's pretty, pretty intense. 
And then when it comes to aggro, which I think that Zoro is just a better aggro leader than Luffy to begin with, Zoro literally gets faster and Luffy cannot contend with Zoro in the aggro space anymore. So I think that while Luffy can still be played, um, Whitebeard kind of definitely fills the mid-range go tall side of red. And uh, Luffy is just going to kind of be a slightly different, slightly inferior version of that. Could be wrong, don't at me. Um, I definitely like Luffy as a leader, but I do think that's kind of a role he will fall into. And then the last one on the kind of like previous, you know, leader, previous format leader would actually be Doflamingo. Um, I do not think personally Doflamingo has any space in the OPO2 meta. But what I do know is that blue players tend to be like diehard blue players. Like I have not seen a single blue player bring blue to a treasure cup and just be like, oh yeah, it's all right. Oh yeah, I thought it was the best choice. No, I am a blue player. I like blue. And if that's the case, some blue players are going to have a very hard time transitioning from Doflamingo to Ivankov. One, lots of the cards don't translate. You're ditching a lot of the cards you are currently used to relying on to play Ivankov. Two, Doflamingo not only attacks for a very solid value of 7k when it uses its effect, but he also is adding to your board from the top of your deck, and you're not using cards in hand for that. So Doflamingo can keep a very solid hand while building a board. Ivankov will build a board while having almost no hand, <laughs> and that makes it inherently the opposite of Doflamingo. And so there are going to be some people that try Ivankov and just absolutely hate it. Literally just like, oh, I don't like having no hand, I don't like this. And they will not see the momentum that Ivankov can provide as um, a counterbalance to how often you're handing out as Ivankov. So in that case, a lot of blue players, I think, are going to be split between Ivankov and Doflamingo. And I think that uh, that will lead to Doflamingo still popping up in your locals, maybe even some of your premier events. Now that's a that's a hot take, but I do think that's a possibility. So before we jump into the cards coming from the next set, real quick, I just want to give a quick word for my sponsor, and then uh, we're gonna head right back in to the rest of this video. So let's talk about Mystic TCG, your one-stop shop for all your TCG needs. On the site, you can buy or pre-order plenty of sealed product for plenty of games. Just make sure though, if you're pre-ordering, to give it three to four months in advance to start looking because sometimes the product is indeed hot, supply and demand, you know? And then if you wanna buy singles, go on tcgplayer.com. There's gonna be a link in the description where you can buy for the best value. And if you want to sell cards or collections, you can message them on their Facebook site so you can get the best bang for your buck on any type of way you wanna buy or sell cards. And then while you're at it, you can use the code UNIXTCG at checkout to get even more of a discount. So hey, what are you waiting for? Check out Mystic TCG today. So there you go. Let's actually finish up some of these uh, well, the ones that are going to be kind of newcomers to the format, and then, uh, yeah, we'll close it up. So, first and foremost, we got Whitebeard. Nobody should be surprised about this. Um, Whitebeard has a lot of things going for it. Uh, between being red, having access to good amounts of, like, destruction, one drops the minus effects, destruction on top of that, that's already going to be good. But, uh, Whitebeard is going to gain more cards than other decks at the cost of losing its own life. However, Whitebeard starts at 6 life and it's a 6k. So the entire math is going to change. I'm going to have to do like an update to like the Magic Numbers video or something specifically when it comes to Whitebeard because Whitebeard actually changes the landscape. Being a 6k, you can no longer swing on him for 7k because he can bounce that with the 2k. And swinging for 8k is a lot harder than swinging for 7k. That's just a fact. So when it comes to this, um, Whitebeard is going to have a much thicker hand at the cost of ramping down on its life but it's also going to be playing a bunch of cards, blockers, uh, things like Vista, which are gonna blow up things, which become valid swingers when Moby Dick activates at one life, it's field card. So Whitebeard kind of takes the place of tall red, in my opinion, mid-range red. You're gonna be playing a game where you're very much so going to be seeing a lot of options in your hand, you're going to be able to build a board, and potentially the closing power can be destructive. If the board presence isn't taken care of, the closing power of Whitebeard is just bar none. It's just got so many threats on board that can swing. So Whitebeard definitely going to be coming in hard. Not to mention that Whitebeard is a natural pseudo counter to Zoro. Because while Zoro can go very, very wide, it's not like Zoro's going tall in every swing, meaning that starting at 6k can potentially block a lot of Zoro's swings that are coming in. Uh, the next leader we're going to talk about is Smoker. 
Smoker is going to be the de facto black leader for this set. And um, the reason why this is going to be popular is because people want to play black. People definitely want to play black. People are excited about the new color. So the de facto leader for the new color is going to be automatically very well represented. Um, also, Smoker is like a flex deck. You have to have a lot of SRs, potentially a lot of alt arts if you like to bring out your deck. And when you have a flex deck that can actually work in the format, it's almost like like having an iPhone or an Apple Watch or earbuds like right when they all came out. It's just a sign of status. <laughs> so like you're going to have this this blinged out black deck and people are going to want to take that out and flex on people hopefully gain some wins too um outside of all that smoker and the black marine archetype right now are actually great they're great out of the box so if you want a deck that's mostly foil doing the things then yeah you're going to be coming over for this deck and uh so i expect to see a fair amount of saturation maybe not at the beginning of the format because people are still getting their one piece set to product but i think middle towards the end of the format you're going to see plenty of black in format um the other one on the list i'm going to say is going to be z so when you look at z right <clears throat> most people are kind of like uh okay well z's cool he's purple he's black why would i use smoker why would i use kaido well Purple and black both have a lot of combination cards. Purple has a lot of raw power, but don't forget that bringing something's cost down is also going to enable you to destroy it with some of purple's cards. So you could have like, because of um, because of Z's effect, you could literally bring something's cost down by, um, you can activate the minus Dawn effect and KO something with a cost of three or less. So you could be swinging with like something like an Aokiji, bring something's cost down and then activate this in order to blow it out. It's got a strong, strong, strong ability to bring things down to its knees and pop it. But at the same time, you're going to be gaining access to cards like Blast Breath if you want them on the defense. You're going to be gaining like access to plenty of cards. Um, this this like can't use board up Kaido, but it can use plenty of the other destruction effects. You can use things like Queen, which is one of the best cards in the game. So this is a big brain color combination. There's a fair amount of draw. There's just plethora of destruction. And so I think that uh, Z is going to see play, or at least people are going to early experiment with Z in our format because its color combination is actually just simply big brain. Like, just like, I think almost as close as law, big brain. And the last card I'm going to put on this list is going to be Imperio, or Emporio, um, I, uh, Ivanka. I don't know why I stumbled over the name so hard. But um, this is, I think, going to be one of the least popular new decks because of its play style. Like, like I said, a lot of people who play blue right now are used to having a fairly sizable hand, and I don't think that this deck is going to tickle their fancy that way, but also, it's just not the strongest deck in OPO2. Um, it's the strongest blue deck, in my opinion, but I don't think it's the strongest deck in OPO2, and on top of that, it functions very, very differently from the normal blue. So I think this card will see play, like this deck will see play, but I think its inclusion to the meta will be fairly frugal, like, compared to the other ones. So, there we go. That's pretty much that. Um, I hope you guys enjoyed that video. This is just my forecast for the global meta. And tomorrow is going to be the first start of pre-releases in my area. So, depending on how many boxes I get tomorrow, I'll just do an opening. Let me know in the uh, comments whether or not you'd like to see me maybe do something live later that night. Or um, record a video and upload it for Saturday. Just let me know what you'd like me to do. But I should be opening my first box, maybe two boxes, tomorrow. And I want to make sure you guys have all that on i'm not gonna open up a single box not on like not on like camera so you guys just let me know but thank you guys for watching i hope you guys have a wonderful day and i will see you guys in the next video later